Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here. In a recent episode, we discussed our five favorite games were on the NES Classic Edition. Today, we thought it would be fun to talk about five great games that were not on the NES Classic Edition. And we're gonna drink another beer from Ami Gang. Today, we're drinking their Hennepin Saison Ale. We're really excited to try this beer and to discuss these five games with you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss an upload. And as always, sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to, and stay tuned for this episode of Gaming Off The Grid. All right, here we go. Today we're gonna to talk about five great games that were not on the NES Classic Edition. We are by no means taking a shot at Nintendo as they did a fantastic job with the NES Classic Edition. And to be quite honest, I would not wish the task of narrowing the whole NES catalog down to 30 games upon any soul, because it'd be really hard. Yeah, that sounds almost impossible, and I don't know how they did it. In a world without legal licensing crap, I feel like this collection would be way different, but sadly we live in a world where there's licensing, there's legal red tape, and all that mumbo jumbo. So we're coming at you with five great games that didn't make the cut because I'm assuming it's because of all that crap. Yeah, it definitely could have been. And the first one is definitely a licensed game, so you could see where that might be an issue. But it contains your favorite superhero of all time. Yes, good old Mr. Bruce Wayne, Batman. <laughs> 1990 Sunsoft. Yes, it's a fantastic game. It was uh, released uh, alongside or with the uh, Keaton and Tim Burton Batman film, and they did a great job with this game. Still to this day, when I hear that music kick off, the down, 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 I'm like, yeah, here we go. I get really excited. Get Jack. Yeah, it's awesome. And then the Batmobile driving through gets me pumped up. And the gameplay is fantastic. Oh, the gameplay is sweet. And the, I love the color scheme and the just the way it looks. And it has like a Ninja Gun type feel, which is really sweet too. Absolutely. And I noticed something about myself when we were going back and playing through this. I tend to like games that have wall jumping. I don't know. Ninja Gaiden, Batman, even Mario games, once they introduced the wall jump mechanic. Pretty big fan. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so anywho. So speaking of wall jumping, let's move on to a game that does not have wall jumping. <laughs> Alright, what is it? Castlevania 3. Alright, this game is a Konami classic. I don't know how it didn't make it on this collection. They included Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, and not Castlevania 3. So we gotta bring it up. It's a great game. It's one of the best in the series. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's clearly a, a following for this game still to this day. I mean, the success of the Bloodstained Curse of the Moon game, which is almost a direct reflection or um, reimagining of Castlevania 3. Yeah, and that game, we, I think we mentioned it in like almost every episode now, but that game's incredible. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So you gotta go back and play Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. It is incredible. And if you like the first Castlevania, this is just more of the same, but it's done better. Yeah. There's, there's more depth. More stuff to it. It's just sweet. Let's move on to number three. Bucky O'Hare. Yes, the 1992 Konami release. Man, Konami's on a roll here. Yeah, they are. Um, anyways, Bucky O'Hare was released in 1992, and I think the reason that's important to note is that's at the back end of the NES life cycle. I really think they started being able to push the NES to the max, and there were some really good games that flew under the radar because everybody had moved on to the Super Nintendo. Yeah, everyone was playing Super Nintendo, so when a new NES release came out, they didn't really care about it. They were like, oh, I don't want to play that. That's old news. Yeah, I mean, among collectors, most people know about Bucky O'Hare, but your casual NES fans are like, Bucky O who? <laughs> and it's a really good game. Amazing platforming, great action. In typical NES fashion, it's hard as hell. I was watching you play it for most of the screen cap. Yeah. And uh, you died a lot. I died a lot, but then I eventually figured out like the pattern and like how it worked. Yeah. And then once I got past that, I was like, dude, I'm grooving. Yeah, there were this some levels fun. where you were going through them so fast, I'm thinking like, holy shit, holy shit, slow down, <laughs> slow down, and you, somehow you got through it. You definitely need to find a way to get your hands on Bucky O'Hare and play that game. This one is probably the most expensive and probably hardest to find of, the, it, of the, this list. Yeah, it is for sure, there's no doubt. Um, let's move on to a game that came out the same year. Felix the Cat. Yeah, uh, full disclosure, we had no idea about this game when we were kids, but RGT85 has mentioned it on his channel multiple times, 
And so I was like, you know what? Usually if he mentions something, he's on the mark. So we decided to check it out, and holy shit, this game's great. Most people are probably like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to play a Felix the Cat game. <laughs> but you'd be doing yourself a major disservice because this game is epic. Yeah, this game is badass. So you play as Felix the Cat, and every time you level up or... I don't even know what it's called, but you get like these tricks or power-ups and like you transform into something and there, there's tears. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, so you, your first attack is like a medical bag with like a boxing glove that comes out and hits your opponent. Then you get like a magic trick and then you can become, I don't even remember all the other ones, uh, uh, a tank. You can become a tank at some point. The tank is badass and that's my favorite. And it is good to note like, so you upgrade those tears and then if you die or get hit, you just downgrade a tier, so you don't die completely. So if you're stacked up, you're sitting pretty well. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just the art style. The whole game was just a lot of fun to go through and play, and it's definitely one that I think probably flew under a lot of people's radars, and it's definitely one that should be checked out for sure. Yeah, this is probably the hidden gem of this yeah, absolutely. Collection. And like I said, we weren't the ones who found it. We had a little assistance from one of our favorite YouTubers. Yeah, so thank you. Um, before we move on to the last game, what do you think of this beer? I think it's okay. I mean, I, I from Omni Gang, it's the second one we've done on the channel. A couple months ago, we had no idea who this brewery was. Yeah. There's a, a like a Hefeweizen element here to this, which is kind of weird. It's not all the way there, but I'm sensing some of that, um, which is one of my favorite kinds of beers. It could be a good summer beer. Oh, definitely. It's like a nice, clean, uh, simple beer. We had their three philosophers in a previous video. We'll leave a link below so you can check that video and the review. And that beer was really complex and really tasty. This beer is just really simple and really generic, and it'd be a really good summer beer. I yeah, would agree with that. I think it's good. It's definitely uh, one I would buy again. It's not the best beer we've had on the channel, but I think they did a really good job, and I think these guys definitely know what they're doing um, over there because they, they're making a great product. Yeah, so if you ever see Omni Gang on the shelf, highly recommend it. And speaking of recommending, let's move on to our last game. Yeah, this one's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, I think it's, in a lot of people's minds, just a staple in the NES catalog. That would be Contra, released in 1987 by Konami. If you're a fan of run-and-gun games or shmups, I think there's something here for you in this game because there's so much action going on all the time. Oh, it's chaotic. And they do have a representation on the classic. They have Super C, and that game is sweet, but the original Contra is badass. Yeah, so. I, and between the two, I honestly don't know which one's better. I think they both play very well, but there's something about that first one. Just that nostalgia thing, and I think that's the one most people probably play. Yeah. So I wish it would have been on there. It's also a two-player game, which is really fun. Which is awesome for us. Yeah, and it changes the dynamic a little bit. Like, if you play it by yourself, and then you play it with two people, you have to work together in the game. Yeah, you, you kind of have to play the game differently, because if if you run ahead of your partner, the timing gets off, and like you miss jumps and stuff like that. It's chaotic, so you have to work together and stay at a pace and it makes it way harder to play two-player, but two-player is really fun. It is, for sure. And we're not very good at this game, uh, for sure. We have a friend <laughs> that's really good. I think he could probably beat it without the life code, but other than, uh, as, as far as we go, uh, we struggle, but it's still a lot of fun, and we're fans of shmups, and so we've played a lot of gratty, some grinding games you really have to work through, and so this is a lot of fun for us to be able to do that. Yeah, we're used to, you know, dying and, like, learning where the, oh, the bag is going to come from there when we go here. Yep. Just learning the memorization, and it's, I love these types of games. Yeah, for sure. So, to recap, we think Batman, Castlevania 3, Bucky O'Hare, Felix the Cat, and the original Contra were sorely missed on the NES Classic Edition and would have been great additions. If you haven't played any of those games, I say you crawl up into the old attic, dig the NES out, <laughs> dust it off, and slide one of these cartridges in there and have a great time. Yeah, I really wish this collection had it. And if you haven't played the collection at all, I highly recommend the collection as well. Leave a comment below on some NES games that didn't make the collection that we didn't talk about, because that'd be cool to, you know, to learn about new games. Yeah, absolutely. Keep gaming, keep drinking. We'll see you next time on Gaming Off The Grid. Did you hear that? There was like the wind, wind or the fall wind <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hit the subscribe button and ring the beer. Ring the beer bell. <laughs> Beer belly. <laughs> <laughs>
Gonna <laughs> <laughs> drink some beer, like usual. Today I'm drinking a hennep. A hennepin, to say something. Discussed the five, the five, our five, the five.